So you guys have asked, and now I'm going to answer, what data engineering courses should I take to become a data engineer? Now I know what you're thinking. How would someone like me even know what courses to take? Being the Seattle data guy, why would I have to even know what courses exist? But truth be told, I've taken my fair share of courses, both on YouTube, Coursera, Udemy, and just about every other place possible in order to go from not really knowing anything about data engineering, data science, or data infrastructure to developing some sort of end-to-end -end data solution that involves raw data to some sort of model. So now let's go over some of the top data engineering courses you can take to help improve your skills and really give you a competitive edge when it comes to working as a data engineer. So let's switch over to my computer and dig into this. All right, so before getting too deep into courses where you'll end up having to either pay uh, or enroll, I wanted to cover some resources that I used that were free on YouTube just to improve some of your baseline skills in terms of things like SQL and Airflow. Uh, to start out at the first company I worked at, we did a lot of SSIS work as well as some SQL concepts like store procedures and pivot, all of which uh, required me to kind of get a baseline very quickly in terms of the Microsoft stack. And so I went to Wise Owl Training, uh, I just happened to find it as I was looking through YouTube, and they have several playlists on SQL Server that specifically focus on things like SSIS, SQL Server, queries, SSRS reporting, and things that are very Microsoft driven. So for those of you who don't know, SSIS is basically an ETL tool, or at least it's utilized as an ETL tool. And it makes it very easy for you to drag and drop different uh, destinations and transformations into kind of a workspace that can connect them all and create dependencies and essentially develop something that looks like an ETL. Now, honestly, when I was first doing this, I didn't even know what an ETL was. I just knew that this tool existed and I was kind of using it to develop a way to get data from point A to point B. The one thing I will say that these videos don't do very well is they don't really provide the higher level architecture of what you're doing. So it's very easy to look through these videos and see things like, oh, how to do basic transformations, um, which is great in terms of, you know, learning how to do some basic drag and drop data flows, but it's not really great in terms of explaining why you're going to do what you're doing. So even in this example, you'll see that they end up taking a list from an Excel file, which might not be what you're doing in more complex data engineering work, where you're often pulling data from either flat file CSVs or directly from sources like Salesforce or something like Zendesk. Also, SSAS is a little bit of an older tool in terms of the fact that now that things are on Azure, things are kind of changing in what you might be using for uh, integrations and ETLs. But I think this is a great place to start, especially at least for the SQL playlist. Um, when you're trying to learn a lot of the complex things you can do with SQL, they really do a great job. Um, you can also look into their SQL server store procedures and programming to learn a lot more of the complex things you can do with SQL, specifically in SQL server, where you can actually do things like while wow loops very easily as well as things like table variables, common table expressions, cursors, and a lot of other things that you might not even know you can do with SQL. And so this is a great baseline for anyone to start with. Now, keeping with the concept of free and specific skills, uh, you can also look into this Apache Airflow tutorial that I used definitely when I was first learning Airflow, just to give you a baseline understanding of Airflow and how you can use it. So what you'll see is if you watch this first video is it will explain everything you need to really know about kind of why Airflow became popular. Um, it was trying to fix this kind of traditional approach to ETLs, which was a little more cron plus scripts methods, which is very hard to support and hard to maintain once you start creating hundreds of thousands of data pipelines. And so you'll learn that Airflow really looks to kind of improve a lot of that situation. Uh, you'll also learn about the DAG, as well as setting up your environment in Docker, which they have a whole Git repo that you can use, I think connected to this video, video two, and then learning about writing your first pipeline. And so this will be a good baseline. There's only really seven videos, so there's not a ton here, but I think it's a good amount that you can at least understand how Airflow works and how you should use it. So let's switch away from the free videos and go over to Udemy, where we can start learning more about the high-level design of things like ETLs and data warehouses. In particular, there's one course that I really enjoy for this, which is the Data Warehouse Fundamentals for Beginners course. Uh, this is something I used more for studying for interviews, but it's also great for anyone who's looking just to get up to speed very quickly on what goes into building a data warehouse. You'll notice it's well-rated, has plenty of students, but more importantly, why I really like this course, we're going to go down below just to kind of cover why I do enjoy it, is that it doesn't just cover specific tooling like Airflow or SQL Server or SSIS, but it's really about understanding data warehousing concepts, uh, which personally is more important than understanding a specific tool because those specific tools can all be applied to these concepts, but it's very difficult to learn those concepts uh, from those tools directly. 
So for example, they have data warehouse architecture, which will teach you kind of the various things you might need to know in terms of building a staging layer, uh, fact tables, dimension tables, and other kind of key components when you're building a data warehouse, as well as things like the schemas that you'll end up using, and also the concept of slowly changing dimensions. Especially with slowly changing dimensions, this is often an important concept to understand whether your company is using them or not, just because it helps you understand how to track data historically over time, especially as it changes. Uh, this can be very challenging. And so being able to understand that is kind of key to doing a lot more than just copying a database over from an application, but really adding a good amount of context to that information, which in this case is historical information. And so that's why I really enjoyed this course. It covered a lot about data warehousing, but it also did a lot about designing an ETL. So you don't just learn about a specific tool like Airflow, SSAS, or SQL Server, but again, you're learning about the ETL itself. And then when you start further learning about ELTs and data lakes, all this can kind of fit better together because you understand the high-level design and the why, not just, you know, a specific tool and how to drag and drop a specific transformation. I think this is much more applicable and allows you to be much more flexible in terms of how you approach your future problems because you're not stuck in a specific tool, but instead you kind of understand why you're building what you're building. So once you've got that good baseline as far as data warehousing goes and ETLs, I think the best way to learn more is actually applying it. You know, you can read more books. There's plenty of books on Inman and Kimball and different styles of data warehousing and ETL uh, approaches. But at a certain point, you need to start building and spend less time, uh, you know, just reading and, and learning theoretical concepts. But to add to that, to add that next layer of, you know, being a data engineer, especially a data engineer in the modern world, I think learning about big data and how to manage it and the different tooling that exists, especially on the cloud, is kind of that next step. Uh, so that's why I recommend uh, using the big data on Amazon Web Services course. I use this particularly uh, to focus on Kinesis and a couple other concepts that I was trying to learn up very quickly. And this will give you a great rundown. The one complaint I do have against this course, which if you'll look at it, let me open up real time. Uh, one thing you'll notice is these videos are pretty long. So this one's only 18 minutes, but if we look at, I think it's the Athena, oh, this one. So for example, using this big data framework, the video is 50 minutes, which is pretty long for a single video. I understand that they've got a lot to cover, but overall I tend to like my Udemy courses down in that seven, 10 minute range, just so I can feel like I don't uh, lose my attention span too quickly. I do think you can generally get a discount on this $109 price. I think I've seen this sometimes at $19.99 or $29.99. So hopefully if you go onto this, you'll get a deal, right? Uh, I think Udemy always has a deal 24-7. Uh, Apparently now it's not that 24-7. But again, this will give you a good insight into what you can do in cloud computing besides just your classic data warehouse. And what I'm also going to add is this is AWS, but pretty much the things you're learning here will in some way or another, at least from a high level standpoint, fit over into Azure and GCP. In terms of if Amazon has something like Redshift, Google will have something like BigQuery. So, so there will be always be some sort of similar tool or solution that you can use in another cloud service. Again, there are nuances in between all of them. How to optimize BigQuery versus how to optimize Redshift is very different, but overall they're in theory providing very similar services, just in slightly different ways. So you can at least understand that if something exists in AWS, it exists in most other cloud providers. And so that's more of the cloud. And again, this is very general cloud. So we've, we've covered a lot of general concepts, but I think a lot of you might want to learn more specific skills like Spark or Hadoop. And for that, I do have one course or specifically one person that I enjoy watching and learning from, which is Frank Kane. For those of you unfamiliar, Frank Kane definitely has a huge following on Udemy, uh, does tons of great videos. In particular, I think what I like is he has a lot of hands-on uh, courses. So you're not just learning about something like in this case, Spark, which is, uh, I've only finished about half this course, but you know, you can get a good understanding of Spark and how to use it um, and where it fits in to your overall architecture, but you can actually do some hands-on work. Personally, I think I've, I've stopped here at uh, running Spark on clusters. So I need to learn more about the machine learning with Spark ML, but I think like most of us, I'm doing three or four courses at one time. So I'm trying to finish them all uh, while learning a bunch of new things and managing uh, a consulting business. Also, I'd like to add making these great videos for you guys to watch. And so if you're enjoying this video right now, I would love it if you just took a moment to smash that like button. Also, if you haven't already, just take a moment to subscribe. It means a lot to me and helps me understand what videos are great and what videos are really connecting with you, my audience. And I really do appreciate it. Now, getting back to this course, uh, I think the things I liked is, again, they go very in-depth and allow you to do uh, examples that are hands-on. 
So you learn a lot about Spark and distributed computing in this course. And again, Frank has a whole host of courses besides this. This is just one of them. That's the one thing I will add, as with any Udemy course, I don't think you're going to have all the best practices after finishing these courses. You're gonna to have to learn a lot when you actually just start doing things in real life. But overall, Frank does a great job at giving you that baseline of skills that will actually allow you to approach said problems without having to spend too much time Googling all the answers because most of them will be in his videos. Okay, so we've covered things on ETLs, data warehousing, big data, more specific skills as well, like using Frank Kane's courses. Also, I think one other key area that's kind of important to understand as it's changing pretty rapidly right now is the concept of data lakes, why we're using them and kind of why people are looking to this new concept of data lake houses. Since this is so important, I would recommend taking the introduction to designing a data lakes uh, on AWS course on Coursera. Again, it's free for you to take unless you want some sort of certification. But other than that, it's got a lot of key concepts that you'll need to learn as a data engineer. You're likely able to probably skip week one. It's really mostly an introduction to the concept of data lakes and the instructions themselves. And you can probably go down to understanding the various components that you can use when you're developing a data lake, like AWS Glue, uh, as well as S3, and as well as how you can integrate it all together. Now they are going to go over Kinesis again in this course, but I do think it's worth kind of just taking a moment and understanding data lakes from a perspective of only looking at data lakes. So the AWS Big Data course is really focused on very broadly understanding the tools that you can use, whereas this is very specifically applying it to a specific problem. And so that's where I think the value comes in for this course. Now that includes the courses that I've enjoyed so far that I've taken. I've taken a few others uh, in other areas. Some of them have been good, some of them some of them not as great, but I think this is a great baseline for anyone to start with. This is probably three months to six months of learning that you're gonna spend. So I wouldn't stress too much about doing it all at once. Now, like I said earlier, I take way too many courses at one time and I need you to help me pick the next one I should be looking into. So I'm gonna show you three courses that I think would be interesting to learn more about and maybe create a video in the future. And I will put up a little picture so you can just pick option one, option two, option three, and not have to write the whole title. But I'm looking at the creating a scalable machine learning pipeline. It hasn't been taken by a lot of students, but it has decent ratings. So I'm curious to see, you know, how do they deploy their machine learning pipelines? Now switching over from more ML ops and looking at DevOps, I am looking at uh, advanced Kubernetes usage. So how can I actually, you know, improve my understanding of Kubernetes, understanding Helm better? I haven't really had to use Helm that much. Um, so I'm curious to see what I will learn in this course, in this case, great ratings, a lot of students using it. So, so far I am kind of leaning towards this course. Again, well-rated, uh, lots of students, usually a good sign. I know you can buy ratings, but hopefully they haven't. And again, keeping on the theme of deployment, I'm looking at advanced deployment scenarios with TensorFlow. I haven't had to use TensorFlow too much in my day-to-day, -to -day, but I'm curious to see how people deploy it and make it scalable in larger production systems. And with that, will end my video on great courses for data engineers to take. Hopefully this will help you narrow down what courses you're deciding to take since there are really thousands of them, uh, even around the data engineering space. Um, thanks and goodbye.